my friends, and let's start right away with the Kherson direction. Overall, this situation is extremely challenging. It's important to know that today, Russian war correspondents who are completely subservient to Kremlin propaganda are reporting that they have stormed the village of Krinki and have already raised a flag on the ruins of the village. They claim to have the entire foothold under their control. But in reality, it's not like that at all. And just so you don't think that the Ukrainian side is hiding at the feet of the armed forces, here is a report from Russian war correspondents from yesterday evening who are still trying to be honest. According to the situation in the evening of January 17th, 24 in the area of Krenki, everything is the same. Our unsuccessful assaults on the village of Krnk continue. Today, our troops tried several times to storm the village of Krenki, mainly from the south, from the forest, and still almost without artillery support. Aviation has not been working for a long time, as well as armored fighting vehicles. Groups from the 26th Motorized Rifle Regiment and the 810th Motorized Rifle Brigade took part in the assaults. In the evening, one small group of attack aircraft from the 810th Brigade even managed to break through almost to the center of the village of Krenki. And apparently, it was she who tried to hoist the flag there, but as military correspondent Romanov has already reported, the flag stood for less than an hour, it was an ostentatious task of the command. The fate of these heroes is now unknown, as long as there is no contact with them. As Avadan, they did manage to break into Krynke, but the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed them along with their Russian flag, uh, which the Russians desperately needed to set up for propaganda, claiming that everything is supposedly fine for them. Another interesting update from the Russians regarding another attempt to storm the village has surfaced. There are many explicit words, but the essence is that they don't understand why all this is necessary. In fact, the situation there is extremely challenging. Uh, we see that attempts to expand footholds have led to nothing, and now they are back to defending. Therefore, it's unlikely that these footholds can be expanded in the near future. In the Zaporizhia direction, all Russian attacks failed, and today there is only an increase in the number of shelling reported. The front line remains unchanged. Instead, in the Vuhledar direction, new offensive actions have begun in the Novodonetsk area. They attempted to advance near a river. So far, only one attack has been recorded and, of course, it was unsuccessful. The front line remains unchanged. In the Avdiivka direction, 24 attacks have been conducted within a day. And the occupies are increasing the number of offensive actions, deploying new reserves and as before, doing everything to capture Avdiivka. Today, uh, battles are ongoing in the areas of Novobakhmutivka and Novokalinova. The occupiers have also deployed a significant number of forces to break through near the coke and chemical plant. Whether they will succeed will be known in the near future, but the situation there is complex. On the southern flank, battles are ongoing for Severne, Pervomaiske and Nevelske. Shalin across the entire front line continue. In the Marinka area, uh, the direction of attacks has changed again, but the occupiers with a large number of groupings are still attempting to break through to Heorhiv. Uh, battles are also taking place on the outskirts of Krasnohorivka, and from both sides they are trying to break through to Novomikhailivka. The village has been shelled from three sides, making the situation extremely challenging for our soldiers. But even under such conditions, they are holding their defense. 
the Russians conducted nine attacks and within a day the front line remains unchanged. Photos of damaged equipment in the Marinka area have also appeared. As seen, they are not sparing the equipment, having plenty of it as well as people. In the Bakhmut direction, uh, the occupiers are not changing their attack directions and continue to assault Ukrainian positions near Ivanivsky, Klishivka, and Andreevka. Across the entire front line, there is a significant amount of shelling, but as before, there is no success. The Ukrainian forces are holding their defense and not allowing the Russians to break through to Chasiv Yar. Naturally, if they manage to take Chasiv Yar, the next target would be Konstantinivka and so on. Therefore, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to remain in defense as much as possible. In the Siversk direction, the occupiers have been somewhat halted. In the area of the village of Vesela, the Ukrainian armed forces repelled all attacks. The occupiers, without achieving success, have ceased all offensive actions and are only engaging in shelling. Uh, however, near Bilohorivka, there is a significant amount of offensive actions and shelling. Within a day, uh, the front line remains unchanged, but the battles persist. In the Krimina area, the Ukrainian armed forces repelled 10 attacks within a day. Uh, there is also a significant amount of shelling, indicating that considerable forces have been deployed in this direction to achieve success. However, as usual, the Ukrainian armed forces thwart their plans and continue to hold their defense, destroying the Russian army. In the Svatova area, the situation remains unchanged with no attacks and minimal shelling reported. In the Kupinsk direction, there are ongoing offensive actions towards the village of Sengivka with six attacks repelled within a day. Battles persist, uh, but in the rest of the settlements, there are only shelling activities uh, without offensive actions, and there are no changes along the front line as before. Uh, every day, it's observed uh, that the occupiers are increasingly deploying equipment and manpower to the occupied territory, and complex battles continue. Also, today, uh, Kirby made an interesting statement. 27. Right now, is Ukraine fighting with 100% of its capabilities? Do they have everything that at this moment they require? Without getting into their operational security and, uh, and, and, and letting the Russians know what they have in their inventory, Peter, what I can tell you is that, as I said earlier, there are certain types of munitions, certain types of weapons that they are expending at greater rates than others. So we can't given the, that they've run out given of anything the threat. because you don't want to give away any I'm not going to give away their inventory list, but I'm not going to I mean I'm not going to pull any punches here. They are still going through uh, artillery shells and high Mars rockets and air defense capabilities at a pretty uh, advanced clip depending on what they're facing on the battlefield and so their inventories are running lower without question. Shalanda Young said in I think it was December 5th in her letter she said that we are running out of money and out of fact Putin embodies war. We all know that he is the sole reason why various wars and conflicts persist and why all attempts to restore peace have failed and he will not change. He will not change. We must change. We all must change to the extent that the madness that resides in this man's had or any other aggressors had will not prevail. Putin is frank about what he wants, what he does, and who, who his targets are. And that's all from him. 
Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.